Hey Team Phantom, so today we're going to learn how to uh, use Altium. We're going to get started with a small project. Um, the project is going to be a 555 timer. So if we look into our Slack here, um, I posted a little image of a schematic here. So this block here is the 555 timer itself. And basically it's a really useful integrated circuit um, that we can use for a lot of different applications. Uh, basically, the idea behind it is it acts like uh, a resonator or an oscillator, um, so we can generate clock signals if we need. Um, and in this case, we're going to try and generate um, uh, an uh, oscillating pulse so that we can flash this LED on and off. So the, the basic idea behind this is we're going to provide some external resistors and capacitors, and the 555 timer will be able to um, generate an output signal that will flash this LED on and off according to the two resistors that we set here. They'll determine the duty cycle. So um, we open up Altium. The first thing you're going to come to is this license management page. And you want to make sure that you can sign in with your Altium Live account. I already have mine saved here. So I should sign in. You should see um, our Team Phantom licenses show up down here. So we have uh, 10 accounts. So I just need to select it and then hit use. If you're ever going to be using Altium offline, maybe you're going on a flight or a trip and you want to use it, you can hit use this Roam feature. So you would say release the license, you would hit the license and select Roam, and you can choose however long you want to use it for, maybe a, a day or maybe 12 hours, and then you'll have the license offline as well. This is uh, Team Phantom. So you can see it's roaming, you can see it's roaming. So I'm going to release it, and uh, I'll just use it normally. Once I'm in the license, that's great. That means I have access to all the Altium features. The first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, go to Git Bash. Uh, clear. And in Git Bash, I'm going to want to navigate to my um, hardware repository that I cloned from our uh, GitHub online. Um, and I'm going to assume that you've already gone through this part. You've cloned the hardware repo, um, and you have initialized submodules. So you can check out GitHub right here. If you clone this repository, make sure you just use this link and say git clone. Um, so what we're going to want to do is create a new branch whenever we're developing our own features um, and working on our own projects. So right now you can see that I'm in the master branch. So to create a new branch, I say git branch. I'm going to call this 555 tutorial. Okay, it's just created, but notice I haven't switched to this branch yet. It still says master. So if I just say git checkout, and checkout is the command we use to switch to any branch that we need. You get check out 555 tutorial. Now you can see that I've switched to this branch. If I want to go back to master, I can say get check out master. So now that I've created this branch, um, I'm going to want to push it up to our repository in GitHub so that um, everyone else knows about my branch and it's saved. I just need to say git push. I think it's there's going to be a set upstream repository, but I always forget the command, so I'll just do this. And there's the error. So git push set upstream origin to our branch name. So you can see that a new branch was created here in our hardware repository. So if I do a refresh, I should be able to see that a new branch was created. See 13 branches now, and I've just created 555. Sorry, yeah, I've just created 555 tutorial. Uh, you can see it a little better here. Insights of the network. Uh, where are you? 555 tutorial. See, it's kind of hiding in here. A little tough to see since you have so many branches right now. Um, in our GitHub. Slack integration page, we also can see that I created this branch. Um, and you saw it said that I modified four months ago. Um, that's because it's running the exact same, um, has the exact same files as the master branch, which itself was updated four months ago. So there's no new files in it yet, but we'll change that soon. Um, so now that we are in the 555 tutorial branch, um, we can get started on creating our project. So we go to Altium, this is Altium 18. I'm going to say File, New, Project, PCB Project. We'll create a new PCB project for us here on the left. 
So I'm just going to right click and save as. And I'm going to want to put it into um, the folder, into the hardware repository. I'm going to create a folder called um, 555 Gabe here, or 555 Tutorial. Um, and this folder is basically going to hold our project. And you want it to be uh, a different name for each one of us so that when we all merge our 555 circuits back into master, we don't get any conflicts. So I'm going to put tutorial here, but it's it's better if you put your name, um, whatever it may be. We call it 555. Cool, now I have a new 555 project. If I go back to Git Bash and I run a Git status, it'll show me that I've added a new file into my 555 tutorial branch of the hardware repository. So what I want to do is say git add a, this will add all files that have changed to be tracked. I have to get status again. It's green. I don't have any more untracked files. These are now all tracked. Now I can commit this to, um, to be, uh, to my revision control. Let's see, commit dash M added new project file. Cool. One file change. I can push this back up to the main repository in GitHub. Okay, so you can see that uh, the commit has changed, and if I go back to here, I'll see it have updated again. One commit push to, one commit push to five 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 tutorial, and uh, in the actual repository itself, I can see it was updated twenty two seconds ago. And another quick look inside its network five 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 tutorial should have gone way down here. So this is the latest commit now, July 21st, add a new project file. Great.